Hello and welcome to today's Worship at Home service. The theme today is called God's Love and Ours. Mark will be speaking on that theme later, taken from our reading in 1 John chapter 4. The heart of the Gospel is the love that God has for each one of us by sending Jesus. Our response is that we too show that same love in all that we do and say. So let us begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day and for your love poured out to each one of us. May we sing your praises and raise our prayers to you in thankfulness and joy. Amen. We will now have our first worship song called Jesus, Lover of My Soul. We love God because he so loved us. Lover of my soul, oh consuming fire is in your gaze. Jesus, I want you to know, I will follow you. Things my way, you alone. 
we now have our reading from the Bible, which is brought to us by Alec, after which Mark will bring us today's message. 1 John 4, 7-21 God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him, and he in us. He has given us of his Spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the God love the love God has for us God is love whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment in this world we are like Jesus there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment the one who fears is not made perfect in love We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must love also their brother and sister. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning and welcome to our penultimate talk on 1 John chapter 4, reading from verses 7 to 21. The heading in my Bible for this section is God's love and ours, and that is the theme for today. John, the author of this gospel, talks about love. He talks about who we should love, and he tells us where love comes from. The passage puts love in its proper context, and this is important because if we get our concept of love wrong, then many other things will go wrong as well. So this morning, let us consider these things. Getting things in the right order. Where true love comes from. What true love does. And what difference true love should make in our lives. There are things in life that we have to do in the correct order. Otherwise, we will get the incorrect result. Mathematics is one of those areas, and there are probably many situations in mathematics where this is true. I'm now going to take you to a little primary school mathematics. Do you remember Bogmus, sometimes known as Bidmus or Pedmus? But I'm only concerning myself with with Bogmus. Basically, you use Bogmus as a tool to remember the order of mathematical operations, the correct order in which to solve the maths problem. If you do it in the correct order, you will get the right answer. And if you do it in the incorrect order, then you will get the wrong answer and not get the mark in your test or exam. Bodmus stands for B for brackets, O for orders, powers, indices, or roots. D is for division. M is for multiplication. A is for addition. And F is for subtraction. The Bodmus rule states that the division and multiplication must be done before addition and subtraction in any mathematical example. And if there are brackets or parentheses and orders or power or roots, These must be done first of all. I sometimes see these types of questions on Facebook and then people disagree as to what the answer is. 
and someone usually at some point says, follow the Podmus rule, otherwise you will get the wrong answer. In mathematics, we need to follow the rules, otherwise we will come up with the wrong answer. Interestingly, the passage this morning lays down the correct order that love operates. If we follow that order, then love works well and it works properly. If we get the wrong order, then love can end up in what appears to be a logical place, but in a very much unbiblical one. But first of all, where does true love come from? You might sometimes hear something like this said, wherever we find love, we find God. It sounds sort of true, but left unqualified can lead to a distorted or wrong view of love. What I mean is we do not get to decide what love is. God does, and the passage makes a theological statement of utmost importance in verse 8 when it says, God is love. This statement is not an abstract idea in which we encounter an impersonal God. The writer is saying that God is love, and that love therefore belongs to God, and that God has love for each of us. It is a love born from the eternal, mysterious relationship in the one God who is revealed as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God is love, and love comes first and foremost from God. In other words, God gets to define what true love is and what its bounds are. And we need to get this in the right order, because if we start from ourselves, we will get any concept of love incredibly wrong. Why? Because we will define love by our standards and not God's. Our standards will be flawed, and they will be ruled potentially by our own desires, which are often sinful. Love comes from God, because God is love, and our love can only flow from God's. So what does true love do? Verses 9 and 10 are clear on this, and I'll repeat them. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. God is love. And God shows us what true love is. If we want to know what love is, then we must look to God, which means looking away from ourselves. When we look to God, we will discover a beautiful and undefiled form of love. So we can say this, love lies in this. Not in our love for him, but in his love for us. Our God is a great big God, and our God is a generous God, and all he has done in creation is an expression of the love of God. God's love is absolute. God's love is eternal, and it is also infinite. And that is why God planned our salvation even before the creation of the world. God's love is demonstrated in self-denial. The Father sent the Son to die for our sins on the cross and had it planned before he made a thing. The Son, Jesus, demonstrates his love by coming to earth, living a perfect life and dying on a cross that we would be made right before God. In other words, God puts us before his own comfort and glory. Jesus gave up heaven and laid down his life for us while we were still sinners. We find that in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. That is where we must start if we want to know what true godly love is. Jesus denied himself, his own safety, and gave up his glory for a short while, and in doing so, he denied himself. True love is demonstrated in the de denial of self to the glory of God the Father. Jesus showed his love in obedience to the Father's will. And we can show love in obedience to God 
and his will for our lives. That will mean denying some ungodly desires in order to please God. So what difference does true love make in our lives? Simply this, that we will love one another with a love that comes from God. It is tough because it will mean we will be more concerned with what the Lord wants, what others need, and sometimes laying down what we want, our own desires. We do it because we live in him and he in us. If we get it the wrong way round, then our concerns become our own pleasures, our own desires and our own happiness. We end up with the wrong answer and we end up in a right mess in this life and potentially in an eternal mess in the next. If we love God, we will love one another and we will serve one another and his love will be made complete in us. So as I come to conclude, I remember that when I was doing maths at school, I had to make sure I was using the right formula and doing the things in the right order. Perhaps you remember quadratic equations. If I got that wrong, then the answer would be incorrect and I would not end up passing the exam. Whilst it did not come easy to me, I got there in the end. Getting things correct in mathematics is really hard and actually Christian discipleship is very hard too. And it's incredibly important that we get things in the right order. That means understanding that God is love and it is to his love we must look to determine what love is. Not everything that the world says is love is actually true godly love. And we must need to understand this. God gets to decide what love is because God is love and demonstrated his love for us by dying for us on a cross. We can only say that what we do is love if it matches with God's love and God's ways. It is hard to do, but here is the good news. God sent the person of the Holy Spirit to help us in our walk with him. So may he be with us. May he fill us as we seek to serve God, the church and each of us, in the complete love of God. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Those words from 1 John, God is love, gives us real assurance that everything our Heavenly Father might be doing in your life and mine is motivated by the love he has for us. So our next song is called Beautiful Lord, Wonderful Saviour. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Saviour, I know for sure All of my days are held in your hand Crafted into your perfect plan You gently call me into your presence Guiding me by your Holy Spirit, teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes. I'm captured by Take me, mold me. 
Wonderful Savior, I know for sure All of my days are held in your hands Crafted into your perfect plan You gently call me into your presence Guiding me by It is now time for our prayers, which this week are led to us by John. Our prayers this morning are to remind ourselves that our faith must be earth in our daily situation, our daily lives, our daily living. Let us pray. Lord of life, we thank you for all you have done for us in Christ. You have given us a new dimension to our lives, a hope and a purpose not of this world, a taste of eternal life with all the fulfilments that offers, resources to meet whatever challenges we may face. We praise you, Lord of life, that through faith we are able to glimpse things as yet unseen, that although we are a small community, we are part of the great company of your people in heaven and on earth, that we are all pilgrims together in a journey of discovery, that we are all in Christ. But we thank you also that you have given us life in this world, that you have called us to serve and work out our faith here in this place, offering service to the community in which we are set making the gospel real in our activities, our relationships, our attitudes. We pray for those of our church fellowship who are involved in outreach and showing this love of Christ in our community. And we especially raise before you today our street and school pastors, Anna Chaplins and friends and Flourish. Lord of life, help us to anticipate your kingdom, but help us also to keep our feet firmly on the ground, remembering that this begins now and not at some distant point in the future, on earth and, in, and not in simply in heaven, here in Sandown as much as anywhere. Help us to be truly in Christ to the glory of your name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We conclude our prayers with the prayer that Jesus taught, and we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Our final song today is You Say. So often we do not appreciate just how much God loves us. We might say negative things about ourselves, but God sees us and values us and we are precious to him.
Thank you for joining our online service today. Next week, Paul will be continuing our series from John's first letter and speaking about faith in the Son of God and ask the question, how can I be sure I am a Christian? Do join us again then, or if you are local, why not join us at one of our physical services at either St Paul's in Shanklin or at Christ Church in Sandown. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us finish our service today by saying the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.